Hello and welcome to Joy in Our Town. I'm Orlena Brazier, your host today, and with me is a very special guest, Virginia Whittington, who currently serves as the Director of Regional Partnerships with Metro Plan Orlando, which is the Metropolitan Planning Organization for the Orlando Urban Area. And we're gonna be talking about transportation issues, and you're gonna enjoy this because it involves right here in Central Florida. And welcome. Virginia, we are so happy to have you with Thank us. Thank you so much for having us. I would love for you to tell our viewing audience a little bit about yourself and what brought you into transportation. Well, I am a 50-year, almost native of Central Florida. Um, from six months old, I've lived here in Central Florida. My goodness. Uh, it's been a long time. And so <laughs> I have seen this community evolve a lot having to do with the transportation system. Um, I've been in transportation for 19 years now after having worked for a, a local government. And so this has been um, a, a, a tremendous experience in being part of this transformation that's happening here in Central Florida. My goodness, so a long time. Yes. So you've seen like a million changes around here. It's been a lot. I wish it would happen a little bit faster, but it's I know, happening, at least do. there's progress. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and why do you think it's going so slow? <laughs> well, you know, with transportation, there's always the planning process, the development process, there's other processes that take place before these transportation projects materialize in our communities. So it takes a little bit longer than, you know, just waking up and there being a project done. Right. Wow. Well, we're going to be talking. Our first topic is Metro Plan Orlando and Central Florida transportation projects. And there's a lot out there. And there especially, is. of course, I like to talk about I-4 because we're located right here, you know, exactly. right in the main, I believe, part of Central Florida. Yes. And so tell us a little bit about Metro Plan Orlando. Well, Metro Plan Orlando is the regional transportation planning agency for Central Florida. We cover orange Orange, Osceola, and Seminole counties. Oh. So that is our footprint of our metropolitan service area. We are responsible for planning and financing transportation projects um, for a 20-year window. Um, and we do window. that by our, one of our major products as an organization, which is our long-range transportation plan. Um, so I like to call us the keepers of the vision of transportation planning in Central Florida. Wow, the keepers of the vision. That's good because you plan way out and then you just do it step by step by step to get there. Correct, correct. So. We work with elected officials from Orange, Seminole, and Osceola counties who serve on our board along with the transportation, uh, transportation agencies such as Lynx, um, the Greater Orlando Aviation Authority, the Sanford My International goodness. Airport, the Expressway Authority, they all work in tandem with our board to um, set the priorities for transportation and how those projects are um, brought online in our community. So it's kind of politically uh working yes, <laughs> the, we do behind have, the force. We do have <laughs> lots of elected officials who are um, a part of the decision-making process. And um, they take advice also from advisory committees that are established to advise them, um, technical staffs from each of the local governments, as well as um, our citizens advisory committee, which we are very, very proud of because our elected officials and board members get to hear um, the perspective of the citizens who are most affected by transportation in Central Florida. Oh, is the governor involved too? Well, the governor <laughs> is the ultimate um, decision Boys. maker in terms of signing the budget oh, each year. Budgets. Yes. <laughs> it's the statewide budget, which includes transportation um, that is, you know, throughout the state, but particularly that that is his role in this, this process. So is that how it's handled to be able to do all of the, the road work that's done, the transportation work that's done is through the government? Is that who pays for all this? Well, there is government participation in mm -hmm. the way that we as a metropolitan planning organization is created. Um, we're a creature of federal law and state law, so we must exist. And depending on the different Good. projects, um, it may have federal funding or statewide funding or a combination of both of those um, attached to each of the projects. Wow, well that is amazing. And I know that um, 
there's a lot of road work being done now, a lot of highway and byways and <laughs> freeways and everything. So tell us a little bit about what what's going on now. Well, contained within our 20-year long-range transportation plan are some very, very exciting projects which um, many of your viewers and maybe even yourself have been exposed to already. Mm. You mentioned <laughs> one of the most exciting projects that's happening right now, and that is the total reconstruction of I-4. I-4. <laughs> um, this project is known as the I-4 Ultimate. Oh. And if you can imagine taking okay. the, uh, project, the lanes that are on I-4 right now, mm -hmm. uh, straightening out many of the curves that are out there, um, taking those six lanes that are there and moving them out and in the middle having four express toll lanes that would be included oh, two in each direction. Doing. So that gives us a lot of capacity. Um, there are lots of bridges that are being replaced during this reconstruction. It's going from Kirkman Road in Orange County currently down to 434 in Seminole County. So there's a lot of work that's being done out there. And it's My very goodness. exciting. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> and it's sometimes you feel a little like I get on the freeway, the, the way the coloring is, you know, they, they've redone the roads so yes. they can fix the other parts. And Correct. I'm thinking, yikes, I'll be so glad when it's all done, but it looks exciting. It is very exciting, and the work that's being done out there um, by those concessionaires, um, it's, it's really inconvenient now, but in 2021, Imagine we're, we're able to move freely through that corridor. So you think it's going to take another five years to finish it up? That is the projected completion date is 2021. Oh and, um, and, and, you know, that's just one of the projects that's going on right now. The next project or the, another exciting one is the Wakaiba Parkway, which completes the beltway around our community. Um, it touches Orange County, Seminole County, and Lake County as well. And it's a project that's being done um, with the cooperation of the state, the um, Metropolitan Planning Organization, the Expressway Authority, and the Turnpike all working together to get that project complete. And that, too, is coming online in, in 2021. Oh, my goodness. So that's starting in 2021 to finish that project after this one's done. Well, it's already under construction. Oh, it's under construction. It's already under construction. And as the phases are completed, it will be opened as they're completed. So um, by 2021, you'll be able to travel all the way around Central Florida without coming on to I-4 if that's the choice. If you're trying to get from Seminole County down to Osceola County, you'll be able to go around as a opposed to coming through. And they'll probably have good signage, right? So oh, people absolutely. won't take the wrong direction. And absolutely. <laughs> one thing that I found out when I first moved here is I would get accidentally on the wrong turnpike exit or something and you'd have to go five or ten miles out of the way to come back five or ten miles right. to get on the right road. <laughs> well, you know, that's so, so very, very important to Central Florida because, you know, we are the tourist capital of the world. So we have tourists here. Um, last year was a record number for us. 66 million tourists oh, visited us right here in Central Florida. And so signage is, is very, very important for not only our residents to be able to move around, but for us to get those um, visitors moving around as well without causing accidents right, right. <laughs> I know sometimes I think oh my gosh I could tell we have a lot of visitors there when you're on the road because you could tell they're not sure which way to turn and then there they go but I, I am really excited what kind of issues does uh, the transportation plans involve well, I'm sure there's problems. There, that there are problems, in, uh, in, and I can just share that when we are developing our long-range transportation plan, there's a lot of technical work that goes into developing those plans. We get a lot of public input when we're developing those plans, and we have to consider uh, population. We have to consider the growth in this area. We're expected to have an additional million people in oh, Central goodness. Florida by the year 2040. And so where will they live? Where will they work? 
you know, we have to use forecasting models in order to help tell us um, how those people are going to move around in our community. So that's part of the technical work that we consider when we are bringing different projects online. And those 66 million visitors that I told you about, we're on a course to have a, um, 100 million in the state, but the majority of those, when they come to Central, when they come to Florida, they come to Central Florida because you know we have those little treasures called Disney yes. World, Universal, <laughs> and Sea World, right? <laughs> and um, of course, we can't expect that when they visit us that they're going to stay in their hotel rooms, right? Uh -huh. They're going to be on our roadways, so we have to consider those as well. And finally, we have to consider funding. How is this going to be paid for? How will we pay for a 2.3 million dollar I-4 project? How will we pay for a $2.1 million Wakaiva uh, Parkway project? Um, so we have to consider funding and how we're going to be able to um, bring these projects into fruition. So those are the challenges that we face, um, but we're able to overcome those uh, because there are formulas for how these projects are paid for, whether it is a federal um, commitment that is uh, coupled with a state commitment and local and then there's user fees that also go into paying for some of the projects as well and um, some of the larger projects these mega projects mm -hmm. like the i4 ultimate project is being done with creative financing um, that we call public private partnerships and this is where the public comes in and they help with some of the financing and um, they get repaid for the work that they've done in bringing these projects on much sooner than they would have ordinarily come online if we follow the traditional financing mechanisms. My goodness, that is so wonderful how you, how our transportation, Metro Plan Orlando, literally looks ahead and you see what's going to happen because that's very important to plan ahead yeah. and that's why they're doing what they're doing now to help accommodate what's going to be happening right. in the very near future. My goodness, so um, the citizens, how can they learn more about the transportation projects? Well, thanks for asking that question because we take public involvement very, very seriously and we invite and encourage citizen participation. Um, the first way that they're able to get involved is to go to our website, which is www.metroplanorlando.com. We have a, a robust social media um, involvement and they're able to follow us on Facebook. They're able to like us or follow us on Twitter. Um, we push information out. We get information in. They, they can attend our meetings of our board meetings um, or our, co our committee meetings. All of our meetings are open to the public. That is so wonderful, my goodness. Virginia, thank you so much for bringing all this great information to our viewing audience. And we're gonna really quick run to a 30 second PSA. We'll be right back. <coughs> They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Hello and welcome back to Joy in Our Town. I'm Oralina Brazier, your host today, and with me is Virginia Whittington, in case you just uh, tuned in. She currently serves as Director of Regional Partnerships with Metro Plan Orlando, which is the Metropolitan Planning Organization for the Orlando urban area. And we just got done talking about transportation and all of our highways and byways and what they're doing on that. And now we're going to talk about the importance of walkable communities and our bicycle paths because we are um, a sunny state yes. <laughs> and we a lot of people are out walking they do bicycles we have a lot of visitors that like to bike right. and so tell us a little bit about our walkable communities well you know one thing that I like to think about when I'm talking about transportation is it's often an oversight that every transportation trip begins with someone who's walking 
Mm. Just think, when you leave your home, you walk to your car, you get in your car, and just say, for instance, you're going shopping, you park your car and you're walking um, into the retail establishment that you're going to. Um, but a lot of the walkable communities are those communities that have the wider sidewalks. These are those that have trees that align the street that protect the pedestrian from the street traffic. There's different treatments that are done that makes those people who are walking and those who are bicycling feel safer when they are going to their say, neighborhood grocery store. Um, and of course, walking is beneficial for all of us in our, our lives. <laughs> and we find, and, and reports have shown, studies have proven that people who live in walkable communities are healthier overall. Wow, that is great. And bicycle paths are so important too. Yes, yes. So. Metro Plan Orlando spends a great deal of time and emphasis on our bicycling and pedestrian activities. Of course, you were you hit the nail on the head. We are <laughs> a state that is is of course the weather is great 75% of the time and you're able to get out and walk and so we spend a lot of time on pedestrian plans and bicycling plans and making sure that safety is number one at the top of our list um, to make sure that people do feel safe when they're walking. Do they make um, actual pathways, um, uh, the Metro Plan Orlando, do they actually do pathways for walking yes. and bicycling? They actually plan it out. Correct? Just like the roadways like the that roads. are planned, just like the transit in terms of SunRail and links um, and how those um, public transportation activities are planned. We also plan those uh, trails. There's oh, over great. 200 miles of recreational trails right here in Central Florida. Um, and we, miles? there's over 200 oh, miles wow. of trail right here in Central Florida that um, we plan with the help of those local, local governments that I mentioned earlier in the first segment. Um, and the bicycle paths that may or may not traverse the roads. Um, so yes, there are lots of trails and lots of um, bicycle facilities. Now, we need to do more in that area because uh, Metro Plan Orlando last year did a public opinion survey with the help of the University of Central Florida. And one of the questions that we asked is how safe people feel that they are when they are walking or biking. And only 25% of the respondents felt that they're safe when they're biking and walking in Central Florida. So we have a lot of work to do. Um, and one of the ways that we are um, being able to provide information and education to not only those drivers and cyclists and people who walk, um, but Metro Plan Orlando is a part of a coalition called uh, Best Foot Forward for pedestrian safety. This is a coalition um, in Central Florida that is working to reduce the number of pedestrian fatalities that occur in Central Florida. My goodness, is there a lot of them? Um, unfortunately, um, we have experienced a high number of crashes. Um, however, we have also noticed um, that with the information that's being put out in, in, with campaigns like Best Foot Forward, um, using what's called the three E's, education, enforcement, and engineering, we're learning through the um, review of crash data and analysis analyzing the data mm -hmm. that um, measures being implemented within our community such as um, medians um, for people to cross the street, um, increased lighting are things that we can do to um, ensure that people feel safe and are safer um, and also lighting such as rapid beacon lighting when people are crossing the street so that the driver is aware that there's a pedestrian there. So there's a lot of countermeasures that we have underway. And of course, it's going to take a lot of work, like I mentioned earlier, yes. um, to get the word out and to continue to drive those numbers down. Well, turning right um, on a light that's red where we legally can, usually that's when a pedestrian walks. So 
people need to really be paying attention that are driving to, to make sure there's no pedestrians there before you make that turn. That's correct. And then and I know there's some people homeless and other people out there that sometimes aren't paying attention and they walk across. So, And with technology today, I know that people are looking at their cell phones and doing other things in their car and they need to be paying attention to driving. Do you notice that that happens to be why our numbers are a little up in accidents? Well, I think that those are all indications of things that could go wrong, whether it's the driver who's texting while driving or whether it's the pedestrian who's walking and texting. Yes, um, that's <laughs> happening and, too. And that's <laughs> why it's really important that, that education E, educating the, the walkers as well as the drivers to make sure that they're um, cognizant of one another, that when pedestrians are walking and they are in the crosswalk, that drivers um, yield to those pedestrians when they're in the crosswalk. And then pedestrians also need to yield when that stop, that hand mm -hmm. is up and, and not walk across the street. So I think it's equal education um, and it's enforcement as well. Um, Best Foot Forward has raised awareness by holding some um, enforcement efforts around the community and we've seen the behaviors change as a result of those. Wow, best foot forward. I really like that. And how did that come about? Well, it came about as a result of a report that came out from the Texas Transportation Institute. Um, they put out this report each year, and Orlando and a number of cities around the state of Florida has remained on the top of that list in Ooh. terms of having um, the most pedestrian crashes, incidents, accidents, and even fatalities. So that's a distinction that we don't want. Ooh. Um, and we no. want to do our best to get off of the top of that list. That's, no, that's one number one that we don't want. <laughs> right. And, and oh, so um, this coalition came together. Um, it's law enforcement and it is local governments. And they um, came up with this campaign in order to combat the pedestrian epidemic that was happening here in Central Florida. And so over the last five years, there's been some significant progress. Again, still lots of work to be done in that area. Um, and it, from in educating our children mm -hmm. all the way up to educating the drivers who are behind that wheel. I really love how Metro Plan Orlando, as you have shared, works together with the community, with law enforcement and the government officials and different people, probably different organizations to better everything. And that's why I believe that, that we're coming together. We do have great roadways. It seems like they're really putting their best foot forward to make it a more safer, nicer community for walking, bicycling, transportation in every area. Yes. And, and we are available and willing to come out and speak to any group or organization who is interested in hearing more about transportation, more about bicycling, pedestrian safety. Um, Metro Plan Orlando is here as a community asset and we are willing to come out and actually eager to come out and speak to different organizations. That is great. So I hope our viewing audience is paying attention and that they would contact you. I'm so happy that you'll do that because hopefully people will call you to come out and talk and, and educate our community in every area about our transportation. Well, we, we're willing and we are ready to come out to any organization, regardless of the size, because if we can get the word out to one person who can help spread that message about safety in our community. Um, you know, one of the other things that I wanted to mention Ooh. is um, with projects like SunRail Online, we yes. just celebrated two years of that project being open. And um, the success of that project depends on connectivity. And when you get off of the train, how do you get to your destination? And that last mile connectivity, whether it's a person who's walking or whether it's a person who's using our Juice Bike Share program <laughs> where you can get on a bike downtown and ride you know, from the SunRail station to the location that you're going to. We want to ensure that those people are safe while they're out on our, our roadways and in our community. That is so wonderful. So you guys, it sounds like um, Metro Plan Orlando works close with the law enforcement too. Yes. So that you get everything flowing together. Yes, we actually have a group called the Community 
safety traffic team or the community right. traffic safety team um, oh. that comes together and they look at um, engineering and they look at um, safety um, concerns that are out there and they talk about how best to um, overcome the challenges not just one organization but the entire Central Florida area because you know pedestrian safety is not just isolated to Orlando wow. it is our entire Central Florida community Wow, and you guys do cover, again, tell us what you cover. You cover from? Orange, Seminole, and Osceola counties. Orange, Seminole, and Osceola. Is, is our primary footprint, but we also have um, regional partnerships with the metropolitan planning organizations that surround us in Lake County, in Polk Great. County, in Volusia, Sumter, Brevard, um, all of those that surround the metropolitan planning organization um, that is Metro Plan Orlando. So we work cooperatively with them as well because again we have um, issues that cross boundaries mm -hmm. and issues that are alike. So we want to work together to overcome those. That is so wonderful. I just love how they have reached out to everybody. To me, that's so important. And again, um, people can locate you by how? Our website, website is probably the best way to reach us is metroplanorlando.com. Also, that's easy, metroplanorlando.com. Correct. <laughs> like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Oh. Um, we push information out. And um, again, if anyone is interested in attending our board meetings, meetings, they are more than welcome. All of them are open to the public, and we um, look forward to hearing from the public when they come to tell us what their concerns are so that we know that we're on the right track and um, we're meeting the, their expectations. Wow, and here you are, so you, you meet with them, they can come onto the website, they can find out when, what time, where the meetings are held and do that. So that is wonderful, Virginia. Thank you so much. You've been here Thank you for almost me. all these years and, and you know and understand our, our transportation. So we thank you for what you're doing and serving our community to make it safer and better. So thank you, thank so, you so much, much for coming Thanks and for being a part. Me. We thank you so much for joining us. We love when you come and join us here at Join Our Town. We hope we're bringing you great information. Go on the website, check it out go to the meetings and see what you can do to help better the community and if you have an issue or a situation they'll be willing to open up and listen to you and we can all better our community and make it a better safer joy in our town have a nice week we'll see you next time bless you This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and is made possible by your telethon dollars. Your continual support can keep Joy in Our Town coming to your home every week. Write to Joy in Our Town, Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.